Here's the MLB Bro TV show, the best from MLBBro.com with Rob Parker. Let's go. Sponsored by Hidden Soul. For the most exclusive kicks on the planet, go to HiddenSoul.com. Welcome to the weekend. There were so many great stories on MLBBro.com this past week. In case you missed some, we'll take a look back. Let's start here. In Black in the Day, David Grubb looks at the fielder legacy in baseball, both Cecil and Prince. Cecil wasn't a high-profile prospect drafted in the 31st round in 1981 by the Baltimore Orioles. After making it to the bigs in 1985 with the Blue Jays, he was pretty unremarkable, hitting just 243 with 31 home runs in 220 games over four seasons. Out of a job, Fielder went overseas and played in Japan during the 1989 season and found himself. In 106 games with the Hanshin Tigers, Cecil blasted 38 home runs and drove in 81 while batting over 300. Back in the U.S., he caught the attention of the Detroit Tigers, who signed him as a free agent. And in 1990, Big Daddy took the Motor City by storm, hitting a career-high 51 home runs with 132 RBI, 104 runs scored, and an AL Best 592 slugging percentage, finishing as runner-up in the AL MVP race to Ricky Henderson and becoming the first player in MLB to top 50 home runs since another bro, George Foster, did it in 1977. While Cecil was sending bombs into the stands and out of stadiums, by his side was his young prince. By 1996, Cecil's time in Detroit was winding down, but the legend of Prince Fielder was just beginning. At 12 years old, Prince was already a baseball prodigy. He hit from both sides of the plate and was sending BP pitches into the stands with regularity. Unlike his pops, Prince Fielder was taken in the first round by the Milwaukee Brewers in 2002. Over 12 seasons, he was a six-time All-Star, but it was in his third season at the age of 23 when he really broke out. J.R. Gamble has the pushback, and this week he's pushing back on the Mets, not retiring Daryl Strawberry's number. If the Mets are thinking about retiring anybody's number, we should start and stop with Daryl Strawberry, the straw that stirred the Mets in the 80s. His impact on this do-nothing franchise when he arrived can't be minimized, according to Parker. He was billed as a star when he broke into the bigs in 1983, and was that for the Mets until 1990. Back then, the Mets dominated the back page of the tabloids, the newspapers, over the New York Yankees coverage, believe it or not. Straw was the National League Rookie of the Year. He made eight straight all-star teams, seven for the Mets from 1984 to 1990. He won Silver Slugger Awards twice. He led the NL in homers in 1988. Best of all, he helped the Mets secure their second and last World Series in 1986. Who can forget that homer off Bob Nipper late in Game 7 that Strawberry blasted to seal the deal? Strawberry hit a lot of blasts for the Mets. An all-time record, 252 to be exact. Rachel Hill takes us first to third with Yankee slugger Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is making a case to be the 2022 Major League Baseball MVP. He is playing out of his mind right now and he is slashing 297, 394, 663 with 48 home runs and 105 runs batted in. He is chasing a home run title for this season. Judge's cumulative OPS since the All-Star break has been a ridiculous 1.257, which has come largely with Giancarlo Stanton not in the lineup. He's logged 10 at-bats after the break. Aaron Judge has done his best to carry the roster over the last month since Stanton has been out due to injury. Stanton hasn't played since July 24th and hasn't made an offensive impact since July 15th. Aaron Judge has a 196 weighted runs created plus and is probably the best overall hitting stat adjusted for league environment and ballpark and put on a scale with 100 being average. If Judge can make it to 200, he can reach MLB bro Barry Bonds status, who was the last player to do it in 2004. On Black of the Day, Mark Gray takes a look at former Yankee first baseman Chris Chambliss. A year before Reggie Jackson hit three home runs to seal his legend as Mr. October, 
New York Yankees first baseman Chris Chambliss sent them back to the World Series for the first time in 12 years. In a winner-take-all Game 5 of the 1976 American League Championship Series, the distinguished journeyman carved his place in Yankees history with a blast that brought the Bombers home a pennant which still causes nightmares for Kansas City Royals fans on a frigid night, October 14, 1976, the ultimate game of the ALCS came down to the Yankees' final at bat with their fate in Chambliss' hands. With a rowdy crowd that had grown antsy and after the game had already been stopped several times for bottles, firecrackers, beer cans, and rolls of toilet paper being thrown from the stands, the Yankees' first baseman kept his poise. Chambliss, who went 11 for 21 in the series, goes high and deep and far over the right field wall, hitting the series clinching walk-off home run off Mark Littell of the Kansas City Royals. And finally, Dodger right fielder Mookie Betts was this week's homeboy. Man, did he sting the Marlins. On Sunday, he went three for five with a home run and two RBIs in a Dodger win. In the three-game series against the Miami Marlins, Betts went eight for 15. That's a 533 batting average with four home runs and seven RBI. Mookie Betts has hit in seven of his last nine games. That's 15 for 39, a 385 batting average, four home runs, and nine RBI. That don't week means he's this week's homeboy. That's our show for this week. I'm Rob Parker. We'll see you again next weekend. And all week long, check in on MLBBro.com for the best coverage of black and brown major leagues.